Welcome and thank you for joining us on Birth Mother Matters in Adoption with Kelly Rourke Scary and me, Ron Rains, where we delve into the issues of adoption from every angle of the adoption triad. Do what's best for your kid and for yourself because if you can't take care of yourself, you're definitely not going to be able to take care of that kid and that's not fair. And I know that my daughter will be well taken care of with them. Don't have an abortion. Give this child a chance. All I could think about was needing to save my son. My name is Kelly Rourke Scary. I am the executive director, president, and co-founder of Building Arizona Families Adoption Agency, the Donna K. Evans Foundation, and creator of the You Before Me campaign. I have a bachelor's degree in family studies and human development and a master's degree in education with an emphasis in school counseling. I was adopted at the age of three days, born to a teen birth mother, raised in a closed adoption and reunited with my birth mother in 2007. I have worked in the adoption field for over 15 years. And I'm Ron Raines. I've worked in radio since 1999. I was the co-host of two successful morning shows in Prescott, Arizona. Now I work for my wife, who's an adoption attorney, and I'm able to combine these two great passions and share them on this podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure to rate and review us on whatever platform you use to listen to us and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Look for AZ Adopt Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about sharing motherhood, which is ultimately what happens when a woman places her baby for adoption. She shares the act of mothering that child directly or indirectly with an adoptive mother. And when I say directly in the sense that when she is pregnant with her child, she is parenting and you know watching what she eats and taking prenatal vitamins and making choices that will ensure a positive future for that child. And so today's podcast is going to be talking about the ways in which sharing motherhood can be challenging and what can be done to facilitate a more easy relationship between the two women. And we're going to go into uh, what it can be like to share motherhood. Disha Woodall said, he is mine in a way that he will never be hers, yet he is hers in a way that will never be mine. And so together, we are motherhood. I think that sharing motherhood between two women is something that can be extremely hard to conceptualize or accept. Mm -hmm. I, for one, am, am somebody that has a really hard time with sharing. You know, from a very young child, I did not share well. And so, in my opinion, when a woman chooses to make an adoption plan, she selflessly chooses to share her role as a mother with another woman, the adoptive mother. And I believe that this is an incredible choice. You know, sharing motherhood is really an incredibly complicated concept. Both internal and external factors can influence a birth mother and an adoptive mother's viewer stance on their own ability to share motherhood when my children were really young and they would get a new toy and then one of their siblings would want to play with that toy. And as adults, it's very easy sometimes to look down and say, just share your toy. I know it's your birthday and you have all these new toys and just share them. But I oftentimes have to remind myself and, and those around me, it's really no different than if you were given the car of your dream. And, you know, your friends and siblings come over and they're like, hey, hand me the keys. I'm going to take it for a spin, you know, and you're thinking, oh, no, you're not. You're not <laughs> taking it anywhere. <laughs> and so and we're talking about things. This is this is a baby. This is something that, that grew inside of one of the baby's two mothers. Mm -hmm. And yet what a selfless choice to be able to share the role of being a mother to this child and the birth mother, even if she has a close adoption is still a mother to this to this baby and she was the mother first she was the mother that gave this child life and so i think that looking at the concept of sharing motherhood is really important for both sides of the adoption triad the the birth mother and the adoptive mother to understand and recognize the sacrifices and the, the struggles that the other may be experiencing or enduring or the sacrifices that one another are making. So let, let's go into that. Internal factors that may influence the ability to have a good relationship with each other. If, let's say you're in an open adoption and you are 
um, a part of, you may, a distant role in the baby's life. You do Skypes and you get letters and pictures and you get information from the adoptive mom as a birth mother and you talk on holidays and so forth. Factors, preconceived ideas, and perceptions internally may influence how you view the adoptive mother. And I think that it's important to understand that we are not walking in the adoptive mother or in the birth mother's shoes. Mm -hmm. Every situation is different. Everybody has come to the table with, you know, their own um, baggage, their trials or tribulations, what they've already endured in life. And, you know, the things that you have experienced do shape how you view things. And understanding that somebody that has gone through something that you may or may not have gone through may very well look at a relationship or the possibility of a relationship very differently than somebody else. These are very broad uh, generalizations as we, we do an overview of what it would be like for each side to share motherhood with the other side of the triad. So internal factors that collectively both sides may, may struggle with, and yet at the same time may help them to be successful in their relationship is the ability to understand adoption from the other person's perspective. If a birth mother can try to understand where an adoptive mom is coming from and vice versa, if an adoptive mom can try to understand where a birth mom is coming from, then that allows them to give each other grace. And the important part about giving somebody grace is being able to receive grace as well. Again, if you can learn the, the motherhood dance, you know, when people, I, I like to use the word dance. When, when two people get married, you know, you go through the honeymoon phase and everything is blissful and wonderful and amazing. And then the hard part comes in. And that's, you know, living with somebody that you've never lived with before and dealing with all of their quirks and the way they do things and their routine. And you start to, to do, to learn how to dance with each other. And so life is kind of like a dance in, in this, the dance is being able to have a reciprocal relationship, which will ultimately benefit the adoptee enormously. If an adoptee can grow up in an open adoption and be able to witness and be a part of watching his, his, his or her two mothers, if you will, mm -hmm. having an amazing relationship that is going to provide the most safe and secure and stable foundation that's allowable. Um, the other piece is that collectively both the adoptive mother and the, the birth mother need have need to factor in internally is confidence in their adoption choice. The birth mother making sure that she believes that that was the best choice for her and that the adoptive mother believing that the adoption also was the best choice for her. The other piece that is huge is understanding the difference between adoption and co-parenting. This is something that we as an adoption agency really educate, especially birth moms on, that this isn't a shared custody arrangement. This is, you know, you are placing your child with a family that is going to raise and rear your child. Right. This is not where, you know, you get to babysit every other Saturday from nine to five, that that's not what this is whatsoever. This is where you may have a visit, you know, once or twice a year in an adoption agency with the adoptive family with the child. And you're going to get letters and pictures and do phone calls and Skypes and FaceTimes and things like that. But this is not shared, uh, shared custody. This isn't co-parenting. You're putting all your confidence in their abilities to raise this child and their decision making and everything. You can't second guess them. And right. This is again. Yeah. Just to reinforce, this is not a co-parenting deal. Right. And, and I would say 
to tag on to what you said, this is the most sacred trust. Mm -hmm. Internally for birth mothers, where the factors that can come into play that may hamper or definitely not help her have a good relationship with the adoptive uh, mother would be if she feels jealous of her, that she is in a place in her life, that she is able to parent her own, her child, and she gets to spend time with her child and be the mother in that moment that she had longed and wanted to be. Um, if she feels excluded from the adoptive family, again, this can can definitely put a hamper on her ability to have a good relationship with the adoptive mom. And lastly, if she feels judged, if, if she feels like they are judging her, and these are all feelings internal by the adopt by the birth mother, sorry. And so these are things that I would recommend for a birth mother if she's experiencing to definitely go to counseling because these issues can definitely be addressed and be remedied so that you can go on to have a really positive relationship with the adoptive mother. Mm -hmm. For adoptive mothers, if adoption was chosen because of an ability to biologically have a child and there is any unresolved grief that can interfere with her ability to have a positive relationship with a birth mother because the birth mother may possibly be a reminder of her inability to bear biologically a child. And it's a reminder that she had to go through the adoption process to become a mother. Uh, if she feels like there is a perceived competition between her and the biological mother. In other words, if she feels um, as if when, you know, maybe they're having a Skype phone call that the connection between uh, the adoptee and the adoptee's birth mother is stronger than she feels maybe her connection with her adopted child is, then there could be some competition. And again, this isn't, this is, there's no competition. These are two men loving a child and having a united and positive relationship. The other thing that's very important for adoptive mothers is to understand and accept the mindset of, I am this baby's adoptive mother, but this baby did have a mother that loved him first. And that doesn't make the birth mother more or less than the adoptive mother. But there is another woman out there that loves this child and has loved this child before this child was born and loved the child enough to place this child for adoption. And so I think that understanding that as an adoptive mother can help hopefully facilitate the, the relationship and allow her in to, and love her as well. Externally, what could influence uh, the relationship would be for a birth mother, the accessibility of a relationship with the baby. So in other words, if she feels included in the baby's life and is allowed to you know, be a bystander in, in some aspects, you know, getting letters and pictures and updates and, and just being kept abreast of what's really going on that is going to make her feel included and, and feel a connection to the child. And this will create gratitude on behalf of the birth mother towards the adoptive mother. And it will help her feel positive about her. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is that as the child gets older, what identity the birth mother is given to the adoptees. So when the child is, you know, four and five, and if they're doing FaceTime and Skypes, how they're explaining who this person is, you know, it's very different with a one and a two-year-old than it is a four and a five-year-old. And so sometimes people will use the words like tummy mommy, or they will, you know, find um, a cute nickname, like a Mimi or something that can identify who this, this person is. Uh, 
if the adoptive family is following the terms of the post-adoption communication agreement. This is another great example of an external factor that will help facilitate a positive relationship between the birth mother and the adoptive mother. And lastly, pressure and questions from friends and family. I think this is important for anybody listening who may have a relative who has adopted or who is adopting Understand that when you are asking questions, your questions may not be viewed just as questions, but maybe as an interrogation, or you're questioning their judgment, or how, why they're doing things the way that they're doing. So really watch how you phrase things. Adoption is still a touchy enough subject, and it's a very sensitive subject. And so if if you're saying, you know, for a, for a birth mother, if somebody is saying like, wow, you know, why do you, why are you, why do you like the adoptive mom? She's got your baby. Those kind of things can be just damaging. And it's, you know, those statements can just be replayed over and over and over again in a birth mother's head. Whereas if, if you have questions about why she placed her baby, you know, something more appropriate and more helpful might be like, talk to me about your adoption choice and how you got there and how you have a relationship with the adoptive mother and what does that look like and how are you able, like explain to me the process. Those questions are totally understandable. But when you phrase a question in a certain accusatory manner or in an interrogatory manner, it can really hurt the person that you're asking the question. And like you say, it can be very damaging. And also I was just thinking as you were talking about this, I think that's what this podcast is for, but in a way we're preaching to the choir. So if you're out there and you're listening and you're part of the adoption triad and you have somebody in your circle that asks you questions that make you uncomfortable, tell them to listen to this podcast before you answer any questions and say, then come back to me and ask your questions. Because maybe the little bit of education that they will get from this podcast or other sources on the internet or whatever it is, that education is vital in making people understand what the process of adoption is now. Right. And that will help us lower the adoption walls. Mm -hmm. And again, our goal in this podcast is to give adoption a voice. So, For adoptive mothers, really try to involve the birth mother. Sometimes in little things, maybe you're redoing uh, the baby's room because it's going from a nursery to a toddler room. Ask her what colors she thinks maybe the the room should be. There's things that you can do that that are not obtrusive, but yet at the same time matter and help her feel included. Uh, Understanding from an early onset what the birth mother's expectations are so that as you're going into this relationship with her, which in most cases with an open adoption is a lifelong relationship that you both are on the same page for an adoptive mother. It is important that you as well follow the post adoption communication agreement. You know, the birth mother needs to follow her end and you need to follow yours because it takes two to have a healthy relationship. You can't have a healthy relationship with just one person. You both have to do your part. And again, be wary of the, the pressure and the questions from friends and family. Just because somebody asks you a question doesn't mean you're obligated to give them an answer. And that's really important all across life. So when somebody asks you something that makes you uncomfortable or you don't feel it is their business or maybe you just don't want to answer it, it's okay to say, you know what, I'd rather not go there, or I'm going to pass on that question. Do you have another one you'd like to ask? <laughs> so look at, look at that from, it's okay to say, you don't owe somebody an answer just because they ask. Mm-hmm. It's, it goes along with the same of mentality of it's okay to say no. You know, if somebody asks you to do something, you know, okay, hey, can you help me move over the weekend and you have plans or Maybe you just don't want to. It's okay to say, I'm sorry, no. Uh, so uh, on that note, it it's really important to not be distracted by the voices of others when you're learning how to do the motherhood dance with a birth mother. 
And if you look at it like you are trying to learn how to do this dance and when people are asking you questions or maybe you're reading something on Google, it's almost as if people are throwing stones at your at both of you as you're trying to do this dance and they're they're interrupting you and they're they're caught they're, you're losing your concentration and sometimes it hurts because of what they're saying and so don't allow that in this relationship in my own adoption story i think i've mentioned this a little bit before but my adoptive mother did something very cool with my birth mother. And again, I think I've talked about this to where when I found her, she had, uh, they had sent each other a letter and my adoptive mother sent her one of the two first of my shoes. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was a really, really generous offering and a way to say, Hey, I, you know, I'm accepting you as you know, sharing motherhood. Um, I know, you know, Art, she's grown, but mm -hmm. this is a piece of her when she was younger. And that was very, very, very cool. Um, my adoptive mother and my birth mother did not really have a relationship uh, during the 10 years that, that we had um, while she was still alive. There were ex a lot of external factors and some internal factors that prevented uh, my birth mother from being open to having an ongoing uh, relationship. She, because she was very young at the time and adoption was very different, mm -hmm. she felt very excluded because it wasn't an open adoption. It was a closed adoption. And she would read into sometimes wording from Christmas cards that my adoptive mother would send her out of love and not realizing that every word was scrutinized and maybe misunderstood. And so it was, uh, they were never able to do the motherhood dance. And yet at the same time, there was a level of, of respect between the two, but in, in my birth mother's eyes, there was also very much competition. And because of that, it hampered her ability to really have the type of relationship that I had wished that they had been able to have. As I was uh, preparing for this, this podcast, I came across some amazing uh, quotes that from from birth mothers that I, I couldn't stop thinking about. So, uh, Ron, why don't you and I take turns and read some of these? If, if there's some that stand out in your head, you can jump in. Okay. Um, I'll start it off then. The most important part of my adoption journey was realizing that my decision to place did not mean that I was not good enough. It was my circumstances, not my ability to mother, that made placement the right decision for me. And that was a quote from Annalise Merrill. Emily Cooper wrote one that said, Today I celebrate the day I became a mother. I had a beautiful baby girl. I loved her with a love beyond my own abilities and comprehension. My love for her was a gift. It was the only thing that made it possible to place her into a loving parent's arms a short time later. Today, I will celebrate her. I will choose to remember it all, the amazing, the devastating, and the beautiful, because for now, it's the only gift I can give her. Tara Cooper said, in adoption, a child is not given up. And we've emphasized that so many times. But anyway, so she says, in adoption, a child is not given up. A birth mother gives life, a child, a family, unconditional love. She gives part of her heart that will never feel whole. She gives another mother a part of her heart that was missing. You give a lot, just never give up. That was an amazing one. Mm -hmm. Nicole Price says, the decision to place is one of the most difficult I've ever had and probably will have in my life. Birth parents just need to realize that placing shouldn't make you feel guilty and having a life after placement is okay. Your decision is for both of you, the child and the parent. Birth parents have made an ultimately selfless decision and they deserve to have a life and not let that go in vain. This one kind of hit me in the feels. Um, Janelle Indingara said, I didn't just give her away. I risked my happiness for her life. 
And yeah, that one gets me. That was a good one. That was a good one. Uh, Lona said, you are making another family extremely happy and you may not even realize it. I knew it, but it wasn't until I saw the three of them together that the next morning that I realized all of their dreams had come true. And it was thanks to me and my sacrifice for them. Keep that in mind when you make your choice. If you can't give the baby the love or life that you wish you could, there is a family that can. Another, well, these are amazing. I, where did you compile these from? Google. Just Google? <laughs> it's fantastic. No, these are great. Just Sarah, I'm not sure exactly who this is. Maybe it's somewhat anonymous. She said, the only way for me to get through my sorrow was to see their joy. And still today, it gets me through. If you can find comfort and peace with your decision, you'll not only get a second chance to life, but your baby will too. And then uh, I'll end this with Jill Wong. From the moment I found out about you, I loved you. That love didn't even compare to the amount of love I have for you the day I placed you in your new parents' arms. So for all of the birth mothers and all of the adoptive mothers listening, I hope that you are able to do the motherhood dance for the rest of your lives. We have a pregnancy crisis hotline available 24-7 by phone or text at 623-695-4112, or you can reach us on our toll-free number at 1-800-340-9665. We can make an immediate appointment with you to get you to a safe place, provide food and clothing, and help you get started on creating an Arizona adoption plan, or just give you more information. Check out our blogs on our website at azpregnancyhelp.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by looking for AZ Adopt Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure to rate and review us on whatever platform you use to listen to us. Birth Mother Matters and Adoption was written and produced by Kelly Rourke Scary and edited by me. Thanks go out to Grapes for letting us use their song, I Don't Know, as our theme song. Join us next time on Birth Mother Matters and Adoption. For Kelly Rourke Scary, I'm Ron Rains, and we'll see you then. 